Hey folks, Knox with IT Inspired here. We are going to be wrapping up the T-SQL section here with doing a little lightweight development where we're gonna create our own database, our own tables, and then create a stored procedure that's gonna write data to those tables. So to set this up, let me give you a little bit of what we're planning on doing. Imagine I'm hosting a party, maybe a Christmas party, and I need to get a head count of how many people are gonna be coming to this party. So what I do is I create a website where there's basically just going to be a handful of fields. So there'll be a field here, imagine this is the website, and a field here. And on this field it's going to say first name, and this field's going to say last name. Alright, that looks terrible. And then right at the bo bottom there's going to be a button that says go, or maybe submit or something. In this way, it's gonna, we're going to collect the info. People who have the URL are going to type in their first name, type in their last name, and click the Go button. And that's going to write the information to a database, a SQL Server database. So I'm going to show you how to build the back-end portion of that today, the SQL Server database. It's going to be easy, and we're going to have some fun. All right, let's get started. I've got SSMS already open, and I'm connected to my SQL uh, instance. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the databases part right here, right click on it, and new database. And we'll call this my party DB. Sounds good. We're going to leave the default owner, that's fine. You can see this is where it's going to be stored. It's going to store that uh, MDF and LDF files. Um, that's fine. Let's go to options. I'm going to set the recovery model to full. Uh, before you do that, make sure you watch the backup video because uh, this can be a, a big dec decision to make, especially if you're on the DBA side. Um, there is a consequence of choosing full, which could eat up all your data uh, uh, data or disk space, excuse me, uh, if you don't properly set up backups. Containment type, we're going to leave this as none uh, because we're, we don't need to worry about that. Um, we're just going to have an application accessing this after all. Scroll to the very top and make sure auto shrink is turned off. And you know what? I think we're okay to go ahead and make this database. Okay, we've got my party DB. And for this, since I've got first name and last name, I'm going to create the first table here, which is going to have a column name of ID, a data type of integer, wherever that is, there we go, allow nulls off. In fact, I want to make this my primary key. So let's go to identity specification. Is identity? Yes. Um, so that's going to make this a primary key. That's going to have the identity increment of one and one and let's go ahead and right click on this and actually make it set primary key. Okay, so we've got an ID column, we've set it to integer, we're not going to allow nulls because the identity is what's gonna make it happen. Uh, we're gonna go to the identity specification and make sure that's set to yes. The increment is going to be one, so it's gonna start at the number one and then increment that count by one every time. Next column, we're gonna have first name, and we're going to set this data type to in varchar, but let's go ahead and set those character limits to 50. Um, that way, you know, if someone's got an exceptionally long first name, we'll, we'll have them covered. And the last one we're going to do called creation date, and we're going to set this to date time. Okay, that'll work. So now we've got a table that's outlined here. You can see we're going to be collecting the ID, the first name, and we're going to be setting a creation date. All I have to do is click the save right there. Oh, got to give this table a name. Let's call this first name. All right. And if I need to, I can come back here, refresh my database, expand tables, and there's first name. Great. Now let's create a table to handle the last name. And we'll do, where we go? Sorry, tables. <laughs> All right, we're going to call this one last name ID, L-N-I-D. We're gonna set this to integer. And allow nulls is no. Let's go down to the identity specification. Yep, that's fine. And set this to primary key again, perfect. Now we're gonna have a foreign key to lock those in. And I will go over that in a second. This is also going to be integer and we're not going to allow nulls. And the last one we're gonna do is last name. 
and we're going to do in varchar and set that to 50 as well. Okay, so we're going to be creating a primary key for the last name field. We're going to have a foreign key here to link it to the first name uh, or in that first name table. And then we're going to have the last name uh, for uh, 50 set of characters. Very good. Let's save and we'll call this table last name. Okay, great. Let's refresh. And there we go. Okay, great. Now, we haven't built that relationship yet between that primary key and foreign key. You can see there's a primary key here. Let's go ahead and do a new foreign key. All right, so it's got this last name, last name here. This is, this is okay, that's fine. Um, we're gonna change this up here. The primary key, as we know, is in the first name. And if we click into this space, we can choose ID. The foreign key it knows is going to be in the last name table, but we need to make sure it knows that the ID column is going to be the foreign key. So do you see what's happening here? The primary key comes from first name, ID column, and the foreign key is going to be the last name, ID column. It's going to be referencing this primary key. We hit OK, and we hit OK. And we hit save and refresh and our foreign key is now present. Super, okay, we've got a foreign key and it is enforced, that's great. So if I want to write data to these, these tables, the command that we gotta use is called insert. And the way it looks is pretty straightforward. You're gonna say, I wanna insert into the table first name parentheses, and then you specify the columns that you want to insert into. So in this case, we have um, the ID field, which is the primary key. We're not going to write into that because it's going to auto increment. So we're going to hit the first name column and the creation date column. And then we say values to specify what values we want to do. And the values that we specify right here correspond in order to the column names that we created here. So in this case, I'm gonna write Knox for the first name. And for the creation date, I wanted to do this creation date exactly when we hit go. And that's gonna be get date, open and close parentheses. And I'm gonna do another close parentheses to round out. It even shows you exactly what close parentheses we're doing here. So if I hit execute, you see one row impacted. I can even do select and there we go, look at this. See what it did? It gave me an increment of one, first name Knox, and the exact creation date, very cool. So now I'm ready to write data to the second table. We're gonna do insert into last name, and we're going to say the last name as well as ID. Because remember ID was that foreign key and it can't be null. Now it's got the LN ID, which is the last name ID. That's going to increment automatically because it's a primary key. So let's do values again. And we'll start with a last name, Hutchinson. Very cool. And to do the ID, here's how I'm going to do this. I'm going to say select ID from that first name table. So I've got select ID from first name. And what I know is that as data is gonna be written to this table, uh, it's always gonna be, you know, the ID increments one at a time. Um, so chances are this is gonna be, uh, you know, the first Hutchinson or first uh, time data is gonna be written to last name. So I'm gonna to wanna to take the highest ID that currently exists in the first name table. This should work fine because it's going to do, well, we'll just show you what it's going to do. Let's just run it, huh? Oop, we need to close the parentheses, I believe. There we go. Let's run it. And now when I do select, check it out. So do you see what it did here? Inserted the last name right here. And then when I told it to select the ID, I told it because it has to match an ID that's exactly in the first name table. And I said, you know what, this is always going to be the highest ID because it's going to write 
to the field uh, at the exact moment um, that you know we're going to run these commands together. So for instance, let's do it this way, John and Doe. I anticipate this is going to create an ID of two in the first name and this is then going to select that two because that's going to be higher than the one that's in place. So let's run the whole batch. Look at that. No errors. That's a great sign. There's two and two. Great. So we've got our our underlying um, method of doing this, right? We've kind of got our insert, but we need to do this in such a way that this go button just executes those commands entirely by themselves. And the way we do that, and also to handle the fact that this first name and last name value is going to be changed, it's gotta be dynamic based on what the user inputs. So the way we do that is we create something called a stored procedure. It's, it's a query or a procedure that is stored uh, because it's going to be called and executed a lot. Um, you can find stored procedures under programmability and then stored procedures. You can see uh, how they're written right here. Um, we are going to create one and they're not that bad. So let's do new query, create procedure as, oops, sorry, we got to give it a name first. We do have to specify the schema, dbo dot is fine. Um, if you wanted to do a different schema, you would have to create it first. Uh, and that would be under the security section um, of, your, of your database, which uh, we can certainly cover security in, in a later issue, but um, you can see security, schemas, here's all the, the schemas where you can create them. Anyways, <laughs> we'll stick to dbo because that's what's created by default. So we'll call this sp underscore to indicate when we read this stored procedure insert names that's fine now we're going to say as and this is where you actually begin the query you usually want to do set no count on this is whenever you, you execute these commands and you see so many rows affected. Um, we, this, this just oh, wanted to return that, that count info. We want the queries to run quickly and we just wanted to insert. All right. Now I'm gonna say begin. And I'm gonna copy the script that we just did here and paste it. But notice this isn't dynamic, right? This is always going to insert John Doe. That's not good. Um, we need to actually specify what's called parameters. And to specify parameters, you would do at, and we would give this a parameter name like first name par. That's fine. And we're going to tell it what kind of parameter it is. In char 50 is fine. Comma last name par in char 50. So now when you go to build the application, when you go to build this go button, it knows to take whatever text is in this box, you're going to tell it to take whatever text is in this box and pass it in as um, that par this parameter, first name par. So what we're going to do is change this to first name par and this to last name par. Does that kind of make sense? I know this one's a little tricky when you when you get into um, and we're going to say end because you've got to begin have to do that. <laughs> I know this is a little tricky when you get into parameters but basically what this means is the user is going to input something for this field and whatever they input for that field is what we're going to pass in. Um, and that's going to make this this work pretty well. Um, yeah, so this is our stored procedure. Um, it, it, to me, it looks like it will work very well. Um, if I hit execute, uh-oh. If I hit execute, you're going to get an error because it was highlighted. <laughs> we want to run the whole script, right? Let's go for it. Look at that, commands completed successfully. All right, uh, let's expand programmability, stored procedures, and look, there it is now. So now that we have a stored procedure and we've got this button, when we click the button, what do we want it to do? We want it to send 
the information in by executing the stored procedure. Let's start a new query and I'll show you what that's going to look like. This is going to be easy. Exec SP underscore and what do we call it? Insert names? Yeah, we did. And then we just specify the first name, which we can say Jane. Oop, yeah, that's fine. Because this is going to be the first parameter, and then the last name, Doe. That will be the second parameter. When I say go, let's hit execute. Look at that. Select top thousand, and there's Jane, and there's Doe. How about that? Now, I don't know why this IntelliSense is there. I guess it just hasn't refreshed yet, but it's clearly working. Let's do one more, and let's say Captain. Ooh, we do need to specify the store procedure, don't we? And let's go to end America. Cool, and I'm gonna highlight this, execute, and I'm guessing we'll see Captain and America. Isn't that great? Isn't that fun? Check it out. That's how you build a back-end data application. Obviously, the bigger uh, your needs are, the bigger that application is going to be, but um, this is fun. This is, this is really cool stuff. So if you're using an application like Visual Studio, uh, you would certainly add a database uh, data source um, dump that little button on there, that actionable button, uh, and tell it to uh, execute your stored procedure. That would do the trick. All right, folks, that's going to wrap up T-SQL. Uh, the next couple ones we're going to go over are going to be more DBA related, but still incredibly important for developers and report writers to know. All right, we'll see you in the next one. Get out there and try it out.